Hi, I'm Andy Ely, a Senior Funeral Director with G Seller Independent Funeral Directors and we've been serving bereaved families since 1910. Now I'm sure you're all well aware there's lots and lots of different misconceptions, myths and taboos about what happens behind the scenes within the funeral profession. So we decided to put together this series of podcasts to try and answer any questions and hopefully dispel any of those myths. So please do like, share and subscribe. Send any questions, send them to, to liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk and we will do our absolute best to answer them for you. It genuinely is our family caring for your family. Now today we're going to be talking about memorials and I'm joined by um, Amy, my colleague Amy. How are you Hello. Amy? Hello, yeah, good, all good. good. Now we've met before Amy and we know from previous episode that you wear lots and lots of different hats within G Seller. Sure do. So let's forget all the others, let's purge them, and let's talk about memorials. Okay, memorial so hat memorial hats on. <laughs> so, how on earth did you become a stonemason? I know it's part of your journey, but let's focus on just the stonemason. I definitely think when I was a, you know, back at school, I wouldn't be stood on the back of a truck mixing up some men, putting dowels in headstones, <laughs> working, working with burly men fixing headstones in uh, cemeteries. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. All right. um, <laughs> So it's actually funny when I actually talk to families and they say, you actually fix a headstone? I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They think that I'm just the person that, you know, potentially is just in the office. And I can absolutely vouch um, for that. I've seen you in your scrubs. Yeah, I've got my combats, my steel cap toe boots Brilliant. and uh, fleece and, and off I go out with the lads. Um, no, so where did I start? So back um, when myself and my husband, Joseph, um, got together, um, 17 years old. So he worked in the business prior to myself and my days off, I used to go into the business um, so I learnt the masonry trade through my, my days off from my normal job, which is okay. the event managing. Yeah. So I had my pink steel cap toe boots, my jeans, my fleas, um, and I'd go to work with him. And from there, I learnt all the skills to be a stonemason. So drilling, sawing, polishing, fixing headstones, sandblasting, engraving, loading up the trucks. Um, people think that I don't lift the headstones, but I, I do. I'm, one, I'm literally one of the team. So from there, I've just been on a on a full on a full journey, um, right from the early stages all the way through to now managing the department in its entirety, acquiring skills along the way, safety inspecting skills, and um, looking after war memorials, um, and a yeah. whole wide range of things, doing pet memorials, and um, cheese boards, and you know it's not just headstones that we that we manufacture. Um, so yeah, it's been quite a journey. And there is there. There's, there's so much to it um, that you've just. Yeah. Uh, you just touch things there. Just again, I, I always quite often say tip of the iceberg. There's so many different elements to a memorial. Yeah. Um, something quite unique at G Cell, I have to say. We've got a memorial showroom, haven't we? Haven't we? Yeah. Um, from funeral director's perspective, taking a family down there and just showing without any prior knowledge or proper memorial experience, yeah. from my perspective, it's quite an eye opener. Yeah. I mean, how do you find that as a Something that so, we So, something, yeah. So, with memorials, we have a dedicated team. So, that's a dedicated team in the workshop and in the office. And yeah. um, we've got a unique showroom, as you've said. It's fully glassed. People can come, see, touch, feel, understand the memorials rather than saying, you know, three graves down from where mum is. I think I quite like that shape, but I'm not too sure what it is. Yeah. But I think I'd prefer a different colour, but I don't know. So our showroom is really unique in the fact that myself and my husband design and create the memorials that go into our showroom. So we say that no two loved ones are the same, so why should two memorials be the Completely same? Agree, yeah. We try and add slightly different design work, different lettering styles, different chamfer details to make them a little bit more unique. Um, when I'm with a family, I say to them, stay as open-minded as you can. You know, if you like the shape of one, the colour of another, the design from something else, um, you had a favourite hobby, let's bring all of that to life. Um, a memorial is a final piece of the jigsaw. It helps people on the bereavement journey and the journey of grief. And it's the last thing that we're probably going to do for that person. Um, excuse the pun, but it's like setting stone. So yeah. what we're doing, it has to be right. From the wording to the colour, that memorial has to encapsulate that person's life, which is really a really hard thing to do. But that's why we have the dedicated team. We're privileged to have the on-site workshop as well. So families can come in and be on that journey with us. They want yeah. to come and see the stone prior to engraving. 
see the stone before we paint the letters because they weren't sure whether they wanted gold or silver we can keep that personal element throughout the whole thing we do it with the funeral so to us a memorial is just as important it's just an extension of the funeral really, isn't it yeah and the sort of final part of the journey um i think it's quite important to say that we talked about lots of different things that we can have photographs on on headstones as well can't we yeah. and, uh, can have them sort of inscribed on there or or I've seen yeah. them in, in little frames and yeah. it's brilliant that there's just no end of different options that we can have. What's the process though? I mean, how, how do we go about doing this? So we've got two distinct elements, I would think, the, the administration side of things. So yeah. I imagine there's lots of paperwork involved. Yeah. Um, and then the actual production the of the process itself. So I'll tell you what, let's talk about the administration side of things first. Yeah, what, so, what family, so family will probably be in contact with ourselves. Um, and from there we go down to the showroom and we talk through the process. We'll explain to a family what is and isn't allowed within the burial ground of where their loved ones laid to rest. So because... would there be different rules and regs? Yeah. And would that vary between different cemeteries? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So there's cemeteries and churchyards. Churchyards are done by dioceses yep. and cemeteries are done by the parish council. Um, so every burial ground has slightly different rules and regulations, which is why with our brochures we don't necessarily put the sizes in because somebody might like that memorial but be off put by the size and think that it can't be created smaller so yeah, um, yeah there's different rules and regulations and would that be the shame with the shapes as well the different shapes yeah. i know we've got lots and lots of different uh, little, little mini miniatures. miniatures i should have brought some shouldn't yeah. i should have had, well, there's <laughs> should lots have had and lots of different up. shapes but um yeah. i have seen that in certain cemeteries they're all the same shape so that's m you must can, be there yeah yeah so the main restrictions in a cemetery is more dimensions okay. and wording obviously we can't have swear words or yeah, yeah. anything offends anything offensive on there and um, but there's more flexibility within a cemetery than there is within a churchyard the rules are, are slightly more flexible um, our team will have done the legwork beforehand so we know what is allowed within that burial ground so we can advise accordingly um, on shapes colors and things that they can and can't okay. have from there, we can then put a quotation together um, and we do all of the administration. So we liaise with the burial ground on your behalf. So we don't expect you as a family to ask us for something. We provide you with a quote. You've then got to ask the parish if you're allowed, because with all due respect, the terminology around a memorial can be quite complex. Yeah. You know, an old polished black granite OG. Yeah. What does what, that mean? What is that? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean if you're not, you know, looking after a headstone yeah. um, every day? So we look after, we liaise with the with the council. We seek approval. A memorial cannot be fixed within a burial ground until approval is granted. So we administer that process. We order the memorial um, with the merchants. And memorials come from overseas. So okay. the memorials come from Scandinavia, India, China, South Africa. Okay. Um, in the UK, Wales for like the Welsh slate <clears throat> and, Cum and Cornish granite. Yeah. Um, so there's quite a long process. Memorials are taking anywhere between 12 and 20 weeks to be in our care. Covid's had a massive Im uh, impact with shipping and imports and yeah, everything like well, that. Everything, yeah. So we always say to a family, as soon as you feel ready to start that process, just be aware of the time frame that you know that can come with it. It's not quite as quick as a funeral service taking place. Yeah. Um, so we look after the family and we manage their expectations throughout the whole journey when the memorial's in our care, when we're ready to fix the memorial. But then there's an element there for, which goes from the office team over to the workshop team. So once the memorial is in our care and we're happy with the quality, the size, the dimensions, the memorial is exactly as specification that the family have asked for. Yeah. At that point, we can then provide a family with a template um, so they get to see the memorial and visualize the memorial with the lettering on before any engraving takes place. Okay, this, so that's, uh, a, that's a, a drawing of, or, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, correct, so they can see design work, lettering, gives you a chance to make sure you're happy with the font, spelling, layout. Um, we won't do anything until that template is signed, so we okay. can go backwards and forwards until it visually is as you, as you want. And um, from there, we'll then carry out the engraving process, gilding, painting the letters, painting the design work. And we'll then make sure that flower containers are drilled or the drill holes in the headstone and base to make sure we can um, essentially build the memorial, make sure that it's installed uh, correctly. All the drill holes are the correct depth. So we can get the dowels in and um, we can fix in a safe and secure way. Okay. Um, and then from there, our mason routine will then install the memorial into the burial ground. So... Safety, I would imagine, is quite a priority. We've, so you've mentioned dowels there and drilling into the ground. And yeah. So, so I take it that this is something that's that's an absolute must. 
We don't want these falling over, do we? No, 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 absolutely not. So we are members of NAM. So NAM stands for National Association of Memorial Masons. Okay. And we adhere to their code of working practice. So we fix to the British Standard 8415. Okay. And by that we fix with memorials on reinforced concrete foundations yep. or granite foundations. We have ground anchors for any memorial that's in over two foot in height. We have stainless steel dowels that will connect a headstone to the base. So essentially at every point or every joint of the memorial, there is safety elements there. So if a cement joint was to go, a memorial can't physically topple over okay. unless one of our qualified masons are there to a dismantle the memorial, B bring it off the grave. Okay, yeah. Um so yeah there's there's more to a memorial than just thinking it goes from workshop, we lift and we place and yeah. we place time. It's quite a time consuming. It's quite difficult process. to lift them. I know yeah, that quite heavy, yeah. Yeah, yeah they yeah. are quite heavy. Yeah. You certainly want one of those toppling on you. Yeah, no, but I mean historically the all the, the, the anchor systems and dowels and so on, that, that wouldn't have been a thing, would it? So it's so yeah, rules came in in the year 2000, 2001. Um, mm. Prior to that, stonemasons could more or less do whatever they wanted. It's quite interesting when we go into burial grounds now and we look back and we, we carry out masonry works on older memorials. Yeah. The fixing methods that, that have go on and have been going on is really fascinating and eye-opening to us because we have quite clear guidelines as to yes. how we have to fix and why we have to fix like that. Um, yeah, so like you say, it's fascinating. I think oh, prior to 2000, what we, what, what you find within a memorial. So it's interesting there what you said about um, sometimes we have to take the headstones away, don't we, mm -hmm. to add extra inscriptions, um, which kind of match and you, you, your template that you're talking about. You put the same, so it fits into the same style. Yeah. But sometimes, what about the fonts? I often wonder about the fonts. I mean, how do we do an inscription? Have we got like an infinite supply of different fonts? Does a machine do it? Is it sandblasted? Does a person do it? What, how how a do bit we do of, it? A, a bit of both of what you just said. We have sandblaster, yeah. sandblasting is a method that we use to engrave a memorial. So if you think about thousands of barbarians hitting the memorial yeah. and it creates the engraving process. So we are cutting through a stencil. So the font is quite uniformed. Um, in its in its style and appearance. We have thousands of fonts, so we can more often than not match up to an existing font. Okay. We measure all the font size, the spacing, to make sure that that second inscription looks like it was always meant to be there, and that memorial in its entirety is in, you know, complete and it looks as one. Um, it doesn't look like an add-on. Uh, we also have a hand cutter, um, Dave Blessing I'm mentioning. He's, say, been, he's, been, <laughs> he's been with us since he left since he left school. I don't think he'd mind us uh, mentioning that. Yeah. And you know, he's a you know older gentleman, <laughs> slightly older gentleman. <laughs> um, but it's the traditional um, carving method. So if you just imagine him with a hammer and chisel, and he will sit there and carve each individual letter. Um, so sometimes we have to use him if we can't can't font match. Yeah. Um, but we also use him again to match up because a lot of headstones have traditional. Um, hand cut letters so he will i've seen some of his work i mean uh, he is matching of a tradition it, considering he's just chiseling away it's phenomenal he's yeah, really really yeah, good yeah, at yeah. doing it it is yeah it's definitely a special art in in doing it and what about once the stone is fixed um mm -hmm. do, do we do anything about looking after the stone thereafter yeah, so we clean down the memorial and my team will also go back um, later on that week just to make sure that the memorial has set and it is safe and secure because um, sometimes the weather control can, can, affect, can yeah. affect that process. Um, we don't tend to fix if it's below five degrees anyway because, like I say, the weather can affect it. Yeah. Um, but my team will go back and just double check the memorial, clean the memorial off as well um, for a second time. And then we send out care guides to families so they know exactly how to look after the memorial, okay. what to and what not, what not to, to do. Use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, not using anything abrasive on there, anything that can scratch, because once the granite's scratched, you know, even though it's a molten rock and it'll stand the test of time and it's, you know, weather resistant in the main, it's still exposed to all elements. Anything abrasive on there will have an impact to its appearance. Absolutely. Um, and can affect that. So yeah, we send out care guides and then additionally some families like us to look after their memorials thereafter. Um, so we go... Oh, brilliant. Okay. Monthly, yearly, yeah. whatever works for a family. So I've got a question. This is always a big question. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm looking after a family, we uh, lay someone to rest at the full burial. How long before we can fix that stone? Yeah, so we um, advise nothing prior kind of six to nine months yep. um, the more ground can settle naturally the less chance that the memorial will subside and move yep. um, we can fit slightly prematurely if a family feel like they need that for 
again the grieving process to happen they yeah. need Perhaps something an to, yeah, yeah again yeah. yeah and we will be there and we, we can go back out in a few months years if there's any movement to the memorial we'll go back out and realign the memorial and um, but we do advise nothing prior to six to nine months um anything after a year is better um, but again, it's down it's down to the family and what the burial ground will allow. Some of them won't allow us to go back in until a year has elapsed. So yeah. yeah. So Amy, just before we finish, we we've touched on extra inscriptions. Uh, so I've got a couple of questions, mm -hmm. more questions, I should say. Uh, the first one, I mean, can do we only exclusively look after families that we've looked after the funeral service for? Can anyone have a a, a stone, a headstone? Yeah, we're. As a business we're more than happy to look after anybody that should need or require those services a headstone doesn't always have to be something that goes within a burial ground we also have a range of garden tribute okay. memorials so some people prefer the, their loved one being at being at home rather than having to go visit in a cemetery um and yeah so cremated remains can sit within a memorial a garden bench um a bird bath a vase um, so there's a Do whole you know range of things. So. We haven't even touched on what it, what our headstone actually is, and what the differences are, <laughs> which we probably ought to. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> what, what is a headstone? <laughs> so traditionally, a headstone is um, a memorial that's made from two pieces, or sometimes one piece that you may see in a, in a churchyard more commonly. It's a memorial that stands um, at the head or foot end of a grave, depending yeah. on which way around a, a loved one is laid to rest within the burial ground. Um, and the memorial sits upright, but having said that, um, as times have moved on, some people have slightly smaller memorials that sit flush to the ground, mm -hmm. some more sit, sit flush with a slight slope. Um, there's a whole range, and if anyone was to ever wander around a cemetery or churchyard and you actually start looking at your surroundings there, you can see the whole the wide range of memorials that sit within a sit within a burial ground so the term headstone isn't now just traditionally a two-piece memorial yes. or a, a monolith um yeah tablet, curb anything, sets, curb yeah. sets yeah, the traditional, lots and lots of different things mm -hmm. but we we obviously cater for everything yeah it's quite interesting you said about um, people walking around a the cemetery there um obviously over time and we have touched on um sort of attending service that we offer Sometimes the weather takes its toll, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Can we restore yeah. headstones or stones, memorials, I should say? Simple answer, yes. Yep. Um, which is where we also come into looking after war memorials, um, which is something that us as stonemasons do. So everything from a war memorial all the way down to you know the smaller flat tablet memorials that we say that sit flush to the ground, um, we will advise on whether we can restore it uh, and bring it back back to life and back to looking new and fresh. We put the new lettering paintwork in there, we clean it, we may need to use polishing pads, um, cleaning solutions, and a whole range of things yeah. that we may need to use to, to do that and create that. Um, but if we feel like it, it'd be better for your money to be invested into a new memorial um, because the cost to keep maintaining and looking after the existing, we would advise, we would advise either way. But, yeah. Yeah. Do you enjoy it, Amy? You're quite passionate about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I find it, I'm quite an artistic person, yep. so the detailing of the lettering, the fonts, the design work, the painting. Um, and like I say, it's the final piece of the jigsaw. It's the last thing we can do for yeah, our families. It's memory, and it? if it's not right, then we've not done it. You know, a memorial won't go out if it's not as the family need it and if it's not of the highest quality. So, yeah, I'm passionate. It's, yeah, it has to be. Spot on. Absolutely spot on. I totally agree with you. I'm all about making it as personal as possible. <laughs> yeah. Amy, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Yeah. Um, I've no doubt see you again with a different hat. Yeah, absolutely. What are we going <laughs> to wear next? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> but um, thank you. So, yeah, please, any questions, like, share, subscribe, send those questions in, liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk, and, and we'll see you next time.